And we're back for round three. Um, we've got Braden Pele versus Wurlof Galdenais. Braden's playing Esper Approach and Wurlof Green Raid Monsters. It's almost a throwback to Theros Block, where Esper Control versus Red Green Monsters was a common occurrence. <laughs> almost a throwback, I say. Almost, because it's not quite the same. They are ready and they are starting, so let's get right into it. Braden did mulligan down to six. And Braden has settled the deckage in hand. One of the good cards in this matchup. Yeah, just, Judge just moving decks so they can see the field of it clearly. Um, hmm. Well, of explosive start. Testing Hydra, Oof. which Braden does not have a counter for. That is unfortunate. <laughs> This might just be a quick game. He does have the settle the deckage. Sure. And Olaf effectively has two dead cards. Uh, two removal spells, that is. Well, he should hopefully just attack with the one here. Well, his opponent can't settle this then anyway. Sure. Oh, it's a 5-5 five -five monstrous dino. Well, not Monster Dino, but 5 have Haste Trampling Dino. Not anymore. But there was a removal spell for a bit. I actually have not seen this card in standard, even though it has some semblance to Reality Smasher. Although Reality Smasher had another wall of text. It has some good rates. That's the, the, the problem there. It's, like it's actually really good for an uncommon. Yeah, it's ridiculous for an uncommon, quite frankly. And in for 4 again. Baden is just going to be forced to sort of take the four year. All of pumping with the trigger on the stack, Baden's going to glimmer. Oh no, it's just end of turn, Baden's going to glimmer. I don't think Olaf should have pumped it there. I don't think so either. I mean, it does not, it does not make his clock any faster. It's going to hard as I think to get three energy before his opponent untaps. Fair enough. Sure. I suppose Harness Lighting was a dead god otherwise. Tap land go is the call. The thing is, Olaf only has one card in hand, what could it be? Like, there's nothing that I'd be scared of here more than Bursting Hydra. Unless it's another Bursting Hydra, of course. And of course, since Olaf isn't playing the card, one can assume it's not a creature. And Brayden has a second copy of Settle the Deckage in hand. I don't think... Olaf is in a position where he can actually win this anymore. Um, like yeah, the fatal push is going to kill the servant. Uh, Braden doing well to do it before his opponent untaps, although that's not too relevant against his opponent's deck. Has it the fervent attack settle the deckage? He uses a throw. Down to nine. And all of being in top deck mode is probably not the best. Yep. Like maybe if that hazard st stuck around. Do you maybe just Question. not attack with it? So that does... Hmm. Wouldn't he need to sack his creature? Or does it just straight up deal damage? Oh no, he, I... threw, okay, he threw for two, I guess. Mm. Yeah. I suppose that's also a dead card in, in this matchup, so he may as well get rid of it. Um, Let's see, what does Olaf... I don't think Olaf has anything that... He only like, runs the one hazard. He yeah. does have Glory Bring it. He has another Charging Monster Soul. I think his best card here is Hydra. Hydra's <sighs> always going to be good. His opponent, though, is just too far ahead now. There's a Fumigate in hand as well. Glorybringer. Does it resolve is the first question. Yeah, it does. It does resolve. I'm surprised that Braden let it resolve. Well, I don't actually know if he has any counters. No, he's, like, his hand is very slow. He but he has a Torrential, so he could have Torrential counted it. No, he doesn't have a Torrential. Doesn't he? No, that's, that was not a Torrential. Okay, he's going to main phase Fumigate, gain one life, go up to six. Um, the issue here is, 
Super Pod. And Olaf needs to not tap the land that draws him cards. <laughs> and he has ascended. So very good for him. There's another Fumigate, so I guess... Like, unfortunately for Brayden, he actually doesn't have anything here. Do you Fumigate that now? I think you do. Yeah, he definitely has to. Forced to one for one with his board wipes. Yeah. But he's, he's still in a very good position, I think. Um, what if there's a bunch of haste creatures? He does get two cards deep, one being a land, unfortunately. Draws a card as well, which uh, you can assume he has no creatures in his multiple creature deck. Just two blossoming defense. And then the search for scans is definitely going to flip here. It's going to probably burn that land, I'm assuming. Oh, is it a land? It is not, it's a cast out, which is probably a fine card to keep. That is in the land zone, so you should probably not leave it on top of your battlefield. Not that that actually matters, but... Let him have it. <laughs> Let's see. Draw a card. Snake. Tip of it can't be counted. Reveal of Rascal's content, I'm going to assume. Yeah. Definitely. Although I would have probably revealed Glimmer of Genius there because it sees two cards. Blossoming defense on the surfer part, so the cost out does not exile it. Unfortunately. Even fortunately, maybe. <laughs> Will have tapped really badly there, I think. Yeah, he could have at least bluffed another blossoming defense. Well, he doesn't have to bluff it, he had it. Or a second one. That's what is in his hand. Oh. He, drew, he drew two. So he just tapped terribly. He tapped terribly because he has the extra blossoming defense. That's pretty bad. And there's another land, so now he's down to not getting things. Phoenix. Okay, Plus please. Plus blossoming defense. Counter. Essence please. counter. And now Olaf's probably going to be killing himself because the Phoenix would not even have been counted. It was observable. That is really unfortunate. He reveals... Search for a scanter? Interesting. I guess a digging deeper and digging deeper is pretty good here. Passes the turn. His opponent is running on empty, but his opponent is actually seeing more cards than he is. Well, has been at this point. Up until right about now. What is that? A second one. Oof. Draws a land. Yeah, already played land for the turn. He was going to have to pass the turn. There's no one mana creature you can get, so there's no point activating now. And now he's going to take Glimmer of Genius and cast it. Settle the wreckage Dissel, I think you take both. Yeah, that's pretty good. And at this point, he's just going through the motions. I don't actually think what of... He as just drew here. his approach. So... You should probably tap a bit better than that. Probably still tap slightly better than that, because you can. Why? Why? You, you're already leaving blue up with... Yeah, okay, fine. I'll, I'll accept that. I'm pretty sure it could have been better, but not too bad. Okay, so he puts that 7 from the top. The thing is he gains 7 His life. His search eats 1. The flip search eats another 4. No, well, he, he gets it automatically because he searches and then untap searches. And then he has 7 mana. His opponent has no counter spells. Sure. So, so as long as his opponent, it. so he's on 16, his opponent can play whatever his opponent wants at this point. Um, he's just won the next turn. Yeah. At this point, like, you should just concede. It is all... And he counters it? Does he not value winning the next turn? Is he going to rub it in? I would not... I think... Yeah, that could have been a better turn for Brayden, unfortunately. See, playing with your food can sometimes cause you to lose. I don't think it does in this case, but 
Yeah, I mean that he just drew a cast out. He still has Sekel the Red Kitch. He just needs to. Once his blasting cannons. Okay. Glory bringer. Doesn't matter. But Glory bringer on the stack, search for his counter. He feels so he could have won this then anyway. I do not approve at all. Plus that. Don't Plus wing defense. Don't you just allow it? Uh, he's literally just doing this to dub it in. Uh, Braden just trying to sort of trick his opponent there saying no, he hasn't declared a target for the cast out yet. But he kind of pointed to the glory ringer, so he has, and that's game. Well, like Olaf knows it. I think Olaf should have conceded the turn before, though. Probably. Don't show the blunt, like the blasting cannons there. It is a yeah. There's good no, there's no the reason to play it, hey. Okay, well, this is what we're working with. Um, Olaf had he had twenty-seven creatures and did not see half of that. Yeah, I mean, that was actually... So... With all the land search as well, you'd expect... Well, I mean, he had very good draws, but also... First things had first, a lot you side out nature's way. He, yes. I don't think you can oh. actually side out honest lightning, because your opponent's siding in legal catechal. Um You can probably side out some number of your non-hasty creatures that aren't blessing either. You get in the Carnage Tyrant, I think. In fact, this deck is... Super geared to beating this type of deck, I think. His entire sideboard looks like it's dedicated to control based decks. This does nothing. No, it, it stops Fumigate. Stops Cast Out, stops Trust Contempt. I guess. Shades up or better. Not the end of the world. Sure. Like, I think Servant is pretty bad. I think Nature's Way is pretty bad. You may side out Honest Lightning and put in a Braid instead because a Braid kills your opponent's Gyarks as well. Yeah, I think that's probably the, the, the best call here, is just take out the... And then... So I don't actually I don't think know. Blossoming Defense is that good in this matchup, because his opponent has more sweepers than actual... I mean, there is a, there's an um, argument to keep them in just because he's on the play. Like maybe. I think his sideboard choices are tough, because he has too many cards to sideboard in. Uh, it's a good idea to sort of have a spreadsheet when you're building a deck to decide how many cards you can allocate to certain matchups. On Braden's side, in my opinion, I think you side out Fatal Push. Your opponent's two drops don't matter. Um, in fact, your opponent hardly has two drops. So, the, yeah, Fatal Push out. I think that's almost the only thing, really. Yeah, I think Fatal Push is pretty average to bad. And um, I think on the draw, also Sensor is pretty terrible. I think Sensor is pretty terrible in general. And you definitely put in the two Scarab Gods instead yeah, because like there's so many creatures. Eagle Catacol, Scarab God, and then possibly Azor the Lawbringer. Just I don't think so. I don't think it's necessary. It's bigger than all of his opponent's creatures sure, and gains sure. life. Oh, well, I guess. He's pushing up his curve quite a bit if he's doing that, though. That is correct. I think you. Mm, I think approach is that good that you don't need to side it out in this match. And the thing is, he can't actually reduce his uh, authority of the consoles as a card he could bring in. Does it matter that his much? opponent has a lot of hastes, which uh, basically says one mana your opponents can't have haste, which is pretty relevant when his opponent has rekindling phoenix, has the fervent glory bringer, charging mon uh, charging monster sword. I think, uh, well, he has cited it in before against this deck. I uh, actually have heard them discussing it before, where he had two authority of the consoles, and the Kindling Phoenix, whenever it died, basically said, gain four life. Does not have haste. That is pretty good. <laughs> and in fact, Olaf said he was forced to braid his own Kindling Phoenix in response to uh, settle the wreckage. 
which gained his opponent four life anyway. Okay, well, they are hopefully starting. It's That is a good, well, that's not really a good hand, but it is stacked. That is not the good, a good start either. Why didn't Wolof just play the mountain there? Look at that. Huh. Guess he has a slow hand. The thing is, Wolof doesn't actually have two drops that matter. As I said earlier. It's all like three or more. Now there's Aronas. I don't think... I literally think Baden does not care about Aronas because he can stop it from turning on. And he left in sensor. Huh. The, the worst part is he's probably going to get... Olaf with sensor now. This right turn. now on that we can Oh no, Phoenix. Olaf's playing around it. That nice. can't be counted either. Come in for five. That was... And now he cycles sensor because it does nothing. It does nothing from here on out. Draws a cast out off it, which is absolutely perfect. Unfortunately, or if he has settled the deck, this is fine, but unfortunately I'm pretty sure a Phoenix is coming down this turn. Um... Playing around the settle the wreckage. He's got a blossoming defense. I think he's forced to take this hit here. He does take it. And try and get the fumigate or something to that extent. Okay. Blossoming defense. I would have just allowed that. The thing is, he wants his key just to be unable to be counted. Sure. Actually, he, you're right. That was the the better play here. And he left in fatal pushes as well. I don't think he realizes his opponent has no deal targets for both sensor and fatal push. And what plays his second Jonas? Maven's hand is looking pretty bad at this point. I think three counter spells a fatal push. Yeah, and, and, no a, and a Kefnet. I think you should probably just play the Kefnet. I don't know actually if that's going to help him at all. Me kindling Phoenix, that can't be counted. Comes in for another 5. Supreme will attempt to look for a land. Does hit a land. That is not good enough though, because even if he kills the kindling Phoenix with it's... a Fumigate, You'll gain 3 life and then take 9 on the swing back. Sorry, you'll gain 2 life. It's for each creature destroyed this way as opposed to each creature. Yeah. And he drew a land as well, so actually he's up. And he scoops. I think Kefnet's a bad side in. This isn't a game where you want to have 7 cards in hand. Um, if you have 7 cards in hand, you're probably winning anyway without it. Um... And Fatal Push and Sensor, as you saw there, not, not good. good at all. Especially on the draw with Sensor. Sensor on the play is still serviceable, but this is actually a game where the game is going to go long, so Sensor becomes a lot worse. And Brayden not changing anything from sideboarding, as far as I could see. No, Neither yeah. is Olaf. Olaf is pretty happy with his configuration as one would be after winning that convincingly without seeing any cyber gods might we add actually they all of is going in he I think he's siding back in a blossoming defense which he sided out that is a and going to 61 that is very interesting Well, of could even consider siding in naturalize in this matchup because his opponent has a bunch of enchantment based removal as well and search for scanter. Yeah, look, I mean, problem. this is the type of um, matchup where I normally bring in naturalize just because the blowing out the cast out, like, and bringing something in, like, mid combat reaction, I guess, or um, end of turn to get the creature back. One thing I dislike about Dead and Sidewood is he can't actually lower his curve. His answers to Angry West decks are all five mana or more, effectively. Raiden's gonna probably keep this, even though. All of hand is also fine. Yeah, authority on turn oh, one there is, it is a good card. 
the wall of playing the bad tap land out again first. Yeah, Same play as last time. His deck only plays three drops. That's the thing, effectively. Yeah, I guess he doesn't really need it, but it's it's always better to play the deck well. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Braden left in Fatal pushes on top of it, and his deck only plays three drops. And the naturalized here would have also been great for the authority. Yeah. Especially since they have played the match before. Serpo pot cannot be counted. It comes into play tapped though, at both players have missed that, so that means Braden is also not going to gain a life. Braden not wasting any time casting out before his opponent can have blossoming defense, and there's a Chandra, Torch of Defiance, which Braden can now not cast out. And. Chandra also happens to be pretty good against Regal Caracal, which is in Braden's hand. Ah, I didn't realize he sighted that in. I think that is actually a terrible idea. I think it's fine. It's fine, probably, because of the life link, but uh, is yeah, it that's really good? definitely getting... Oh, he's Supreme Willing, not even disallowing it. I guess that's fine. The thing is, the Supreme Will may need to dig him some cards. Down 16. Blasters could tip the Chandra. Never mind. Chandra cannot be blossoming defense, so that is perfectly fine. Interesting that he did that in his main phase. I guess he doesn't want to lose that last two. Another Rekindling Phoenix. I'm just to play tap. This time they are remembering the triggers of Braden is gaining one life. Legal Caracal. Does nothing. Although, it gains him four life. He has a second copy in hand. Oh, that is going to get uncomfortable. Plus the guy to tap. I do not think that is good enough. Doesn't he have a removal spell? Maybe? I think he sided all of them out. I don't think he actually brought the uh. blades in. Raiden takes four. Raiden now costs a card that's going to make all of the jet siding out removal completely. Second legal character. Get another four cats. Many a kitty. And he attacks for ten points of lifelink. Trying to figure out what's happening here exactly. Not too sure what is going on here, but we will get back to you guys as soon as we find out. Oh, he's just waiting for more. Waiting for more kitties. Sure, okay. attacks for 10 lifelink. Olaf is probably going to lose this game at this point. Because his opponent has 20 points of power for 10 mana. Seems like a good rate. That is a massive swing. They also have lifelink. Ah, wow. I think... There's another 4 drop. A hazard it that doesn't have haste effectively. Attacking for 20 is pretty strong. What Braden can also do is disallow the trigger for Dusting Hydra. I think this is bad. If, if he's going to not attack with everything, which means he's going to miss lethal, that is probably bad. Yeah, he needs to just attack with all of them because no matter what happens here, he wins. There you go, all of them. It's like he did our minds. You still take 12. And that's it, really. Um, okay, so that was a, a quick control match. Um, well, he did side in creatures. He did side in creatures. So, um, 
I guess we'll get back on the next round. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it might be Bladen again. We'll maybe see Esper approach, which I think is actually the worst approach deck. Actually, no, I think Bant approach is the worst approach deck. I think any approach is the worst approach. Sure. 